So, there is an important property of these symmetry operations which you can easily see and that is the origin of the name point group, a space group and so on that they form a group. Symmetry operations of an object form a group. So, they always occur in groups, they do not occur separately. So, what exactly is a group? So, group is a mathematical concept, so we will define that. let us define group. So, a set you for a group you need a set a set of elements and you need a binary operation means a way of combining two elements. So, a set with a binary operation will call a group if it satisfies certain conditions and what are those conditions? If so, let us say a set G with a binary operation some binary operation. So, so, first first property which a group should satisfy is the closure property. That is, if A belongs to group and B belongs to group. So, the combination of A and B by binary operation. So, let us say binary operation dot. So, then A dot B also belongs to the group, it should not go out of the group. So, let us consider a set 1, 2, 3 and with the binary operation plus. Is it closed? It is not closed. 2 plus 3 is equal to 5 and it does not belong to, does not belong to the set. So, this is not a closed set under the binary operation of addition. So, if we want to have a closed set under binary operation of addition, what will I have to do? So, that is the entire natural, entire natural numbers we will have to take, then only it will become closed. No? No, I am only looking at the property closer at the moment. So, it is closed under plus. The second property is associative. This says that if you have three objects, then 
pen does not matter and you are combining these three object. So, since you have a binary operation and you have to combine three of you do not have a ternary operation. So, since you have a binary operation you and you have to combine three objects you have to decide whether you have to combine a and b first and then combine it with c or you combine b and c first and then combine it with a and it should not matter if it is associative it is demanding that it should not matter. So, our plus naturally satisfies this. So, we do not worry about this because 1 plus 2 plus 3 the result does not depend upon which way do we do the addition. So, natural number n is associative with respect to plus. The third thing we require is an identity. There should be an a special element called identity. Now, identity is represented by various symbols often either by 1 or by e because the normal um, the normal way of looking at the binary operation is to call them multiplication and in multiplication one uh, acts like an identity sometimes we use the symbol e as an identity. So, what is identity? A E should be equal to E A should be equal to A. So, this element whichever way you combine with any given element either by pre multiplication or by post multiplication should not change your element. So, is the natural number is having the identity operation with plus what you require for that 0. zero. So, what is that called n plus 0 whole number hmm? let us say n plus 0 whatever that is called. So, this will have 0, 1, 2 and everything up to infinity. So, 0 is identity with respect to the binary operation plus. because it leaves. So, either I have 0 plus 1 or 1 plus 0 it will remain 1. In general a plus 0, 0 plus a is a. So, now we have identity also, but still it has not become a group because we have the final requirement for group is inverse. So, what is inverse? There is there is an element A inverse for all A belonging to G such that if you combine A and A inverse or A inverse and A you should get the identity.
So, what is inverse with respect to addition? Negative number. So, inverse of 2 should be a number which when combined with 2 gives me the identity and identity for um, addition is 0. So, 2 plus 2 minus 2 is 0, but we have not included that, we have not included the negative integers. So, I now have to add the negative numbers also. So, I will get the set of integers if I want a group. So, n is not a group n plus 0 is also not a group, but z with all negative numbers included now it forms a group. So, we will say integers set of integers is a group under plus n with 0 also is not a group. because inverses are missing, other three properties were there, inverses missing. So, what has all this to do with symmetry? So, if you now look at symmetry, symmetry also what will be a binary operation for symmetry? So, symmetry is an operation, symmetry itself is an operation. So, for example, when we say reflection that is an operation, rotation that is an operation. So, our set, our set is set of symmetry operations, our set G is set of symmetry operations. So, for example, we saw that this H which was highly symmetric has a vertical mirror, horizontal mirror and a two fold. So, it was having. So, what is what are its symmetry operations? So, let us call this um, let us call this m v, let us call this m h and let us call this a 2. So, it has a symmetry operations m h, m v 2 and identity which, which we call 1. But the, the symmetry operations are itself elements now, they are elements of the set. So, elements of the set are operations, but for group we require a binary operation. So, we require uh, another operation which combines these two elements or any two elements in this. What will that operation be? Two times, one after the another. So, followed by followed by I can combine, when I say I will combine two operation. So, I will say one operation followed by another operation combine a horizontal mirror with a vertical mirror. So, first reflect horizontally, then reflect vertically. So, with this definition now that I collect all the symmetry operations of an object, 
and I combine them by the operation of followed by, does it form a group? So, let us explore that. So, let us look at one by one. The first property was closer. What was the defining uh, requirement for being a member of this group? What operations we collected in this group? No, combination Y is M H qualified to be part of this group because M H left H unchanged. Hmm? So, if M H leaves H unchanged and M V leaves H unchanged, so a combined operation of M H followed by M V obviously will leave it unchanged and if that is also leaving it unchanged. So, that should also be a part of the group. So, I means in my list of symmetry elements or symmetry operations of H, I cannot miss combination of M H and M V, because M H is leaving H unchanged, M V is leaving H unchanged. So, how cannot M H followed by M V be not part of that set? That is also leaving it unchanged. So, that is also should be a symmetry operation but I have not written M H combined M V. So, closure is demanded that if A then A B, A B is actually A followed by B, first we apply B, no, sorry it is B, yeah first we apply B and then A, so A followed by B, yeah A followed by B, this should also belong to G, because it leaves object unchanged by very definition. So, if A is a symmetry operation, B is a symmetry operation, the combined element a b has to be a symmetry operation, you have no other way out. So, it, the closure property has to be there. Associativity we have to check, but usually it is always satisfied. So, in this case again what can happen? You, nothing else can happen, they have to be the same. A B leaves it unchanged and then you combine it with C that also leaves unchanged. So, the net result of the left hand side A B applied first and then C is leaving the object unchanged, the right hand side also leaves the object unchanged, because C leaves it unchanged, you combine it with B that also leaves it unchanged and then you combine it with A that also leaves it unchanged. So, obviously, the two are equal by very definition of symmetry. So, associativity is also satisfied, identity doing nothing leaves it unchanged and we have called it one. So, identity is also there and if you apply some symmetry operation, if I apply horizontal mirror and then do nothing, what is the resultant? Horizontal mirror. So, the doing nothing does qualify as an identity operation. What about inverse? 
So, if I apply a horizontal mirror, I reflect and then I reflect again. What is the reflection of a reflection? The original object. So, reflection of a reflection is the original object means you are doing nothing. So, that is an identity. So, m h is its own inverse, m h inverse is m h, m v inverse is m v and 2 inverse is 2. So, inverses are there. Now, but inverses are there, identity is there, we have not yet ensured that whether the products are there all combinations should also be there. So, now since we are having these element, we need to ensure that m h m v m v m h m h 2 2 m h m v 2 2 m v, these all should be part. Because they are also the symmetry operation, they are also leaving the object unchanged. Where are they? M H M V to hai nahi. Hmm? m h m v is 2. Let us see how it is 2, let us try to prove that. Let us say we have an object and we have a two mirrors. we have A, this is M V, this is M H. Let us first apply M V. So, we are doing this operation, first M V and then M H. So, first we apply M V. So, we reflect in the vertical mirror, I generate the point B. Now, actually although it is a point, we have to keep in mind that reflection changes the so called chirality that is handedness. Reflection will change a left handed coordinate system to a right handed coordinate system. In point it is not obvious, but suppose what will happen? Suppose what will happen if I have a right handed coordinate system x cross y is pointing up, I reflect it in this red mirror. x prime cross y prime pointing down. So, if we call this a right handed coordinate system or a right handed object, this is a left handed object. So, although we will draw points, we will imagine that actually that point is representing not only a location, but some sort of a right handed object at that location. So, let us say that A is a right handed object, then what will become of B? B will be a left handed object. Now, I apply another operation, because I have to apply M V followed by. So, I come here. Now, if a left handed object is reflected, then you get uh, again a right handed object. So, I get C 
which is again a right handed object. So, the net result of m v followed by m h is a going to c directly. And by what operation a will go to c directly? 180 degree rotation. And what does rotation do to the handedness? It does not change. So, a right handed object going 180 degree opposite with the same distance that you can prove geometrically that this this distance d is same as this distance d. So, a right handed object located here at arm's length is going 180 degree away to arm's length then what is the operation which is relating the two 180 degree rotation about the vertical axis that is why that is why we were. So, now that surprise is explained or that observation is explained if at all that was a surprise that whenever we were seeing two mirrors in any of the letters here the two fold was always there at the sitting at the center because the combination of the two fold uh, two uh, mirrors itself is a, a two fold. So, this is where that group property is coming. So, actually m h and m v are included as as two because we have included two in the we have included two in the group. So, the product of m h and m v is two you will find that m v m h is also 2. What will be m h 2? m h 2 will be m v. Remember m h 2 cannot be 2. Why? Yeah. Using m h you are changing handedness using 2 you are not changing the handedness. So, the net result is a change of handedness and a change of handedness cannot come from 2. So, m h and 2 will give you m v. So, everything is consistent. So, we get a nice group. So, th that is the reason why we use the word group of symmetry, symmetry group. So, symmetry operations of an object forms a group under binary operations followed by and we have seen that one concrete example we have seen we just finished the lecture with the what is called a group multiplication table. Table of symmetry operations of H. By the way, since this is having two mirror planes and a two fold axis, there is a so called Hermann Morgan symbol for it. which is called m m 2. So, one m represents one mirror, another m represents another mirror and two represents the two fold axis at the intersection point. So, let us cre create a group multiplication table for this. So, what we mean by group multiplication table? 
we just have to write all the elements. both horizontally and vertically. So, let us start with the identity 1, then 2, then m h and then m v and I write 1, 2, m h, m v. All you have to do is to in any any box now I will fill the row with the column element multiplied by the row element. So, 1 into 1 is 1 thankfully, 1 into 2 identity being combined with any operation. So, we will leave it unchanged. So, that row is easy for us to write. Similarly, if I if I do 2 into 1, so that will remain 2. So, the column also is easy to write the first column. Now, the other this 3 by 3 9 elements you have to be careful. So, 2 into 2 gives you what? 1, 2 into 2 1, 2 into m h m v. 2 into m v m h m h into 2 m v m h into m h 1 reflection is its own inverse. This is a strange group interesting group where each element is a self inverse do not think that this is a common property that elements are their inverses if you are seeing only this group we may conclude that, but this will not be true as we will look at other groups. So, in this case each element is its own self inverse m h into m v 2 m v into 2 m h m v into m h 2. So, you can see a beautiful table has been formed which is justifying your group property first of all is uh, that you did not get in this table means uh, we, we made a header of rows of all the elements and a header of columns uh, of all the elements and we are multiplying. On multiplication we did not generate any new element other than the top 4 which we had written. So, that is closer for every row we are seeing and we are seeing that the row of 1 is leaving everything unchanged. So, that is the identity similarly column of 1 is leaving everything unchanged. So, identity is there then we are seeing that in every row 1 appears once. So, and that is the inverse of that particular element. So, every element has an inverse this kind of group multiplication table that way shows you the group structure also clearly and ensures you that the object is a group and you are not getting anything means it is not that the closure property is not satisfied.